And I think we can break it down to like hormone shifts. So especially with women, um, especially when we start our menstrual cycle, there are definitely hormonal changes that happen with that. Um, so monthly hormonal changes. Um, then we look at, you know, things that can affect our hormones um, uh, with regards to external factors. So like food can affect our hormones. If you have poor digestion, that can affect your hormones. Um, I talk a lot about stress with my, um, with my patients because that's a huge factor with cortisol, you know, one of your main stress hormones right. that can affect, you know, things like estrogen and progesterone and insulin and your thyroid and melatonin and sleep and all that. Welcome back, everybody, to the Healthy Habit Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Dayan of Healthy Habit Medical Center. And uh, welcome to episode number three of 2024, or episode number 92 total here on the podcast. And we're talking today with Dr. Marita Sho, who's the author of the two books, Making Sense of Woman's Health and Collagen Myths and Misconceptions. Dr. Marita also co-authored The Adrenal Stress Connection. In addition to her clinical practice, she lectures across North America educating people on positive lifestyle choices. The last time we sp spoke with Dr. Marita was on the podcast or on the radio at 1100 KFNX, the Pulse of Arizona. So thanks, Doc, for coming on today. And we're talking all things natural factors on today's show. How are we doing? I'm excellent. How are you? Doing great. I'm excited to talk to, to you uh, in person here, first time on Zoom. So let's dive right into this. Uh, we're, today, we're going to really cover women's health. We have in the field of naturopathic medicine, there's at least four or five female patients for every male patient. That's just what I've observed over the years. Uh, so today we're making sense of women's health. Let's dive right into it. How do you want to lead us in today? Jeez. Well, I've been in practice for probably, well, I'm coming into close to 20 years now. Oh. So I've seen um, a variety of different cases. Um, I know that a lot of women that come into my practice are quite confused when it comes to their hormones. They just right. want to get better understanding. Um, so there's a lot to cover. And obviously there's a lot of underlying things that interplay with our hormones. Um, I always like to talk to my patients about kind of like laying the foundation. Um, so with regards to like lifestyle and sleep and water and movement and, you know, so we really focus on all those things, but um, there's a lot of uh, obviously like really effective supplements that can help with rebalancing as well. But for it's, sure, it's not that simple. <laughs> right. And maybe in this first half, because we're going to do a part one and part two here with Dr. Marita, uh, we'll cover kind of what are some things a woman with PCOS should be doing to support her health, talk about hormones, what they are, what they do, why are they so important. And then maybe in part two, we'll definitely highlight more of the natural fat factors products that are available. So when people hear hormones, I don't even know what they think, maybe energy levels, that's probably a common one, but give us a little rundown of what they are. Why are they so important? Why have you chosen to focus on them clinically for all these years? Mm -hmm. um, so hormones are these really neat kind of like chemical messengers that um, essentially like dictate, I think every like process in the human body. So everything from sleep to energy, to metabolism, um, to digestion, to blood sugar control. Um, so they're really, really important and they all kind of interplay with one another. Um, so it can get really complicated if, you know, you have like one hormone process out, right. um, because it can kind of cause this cascade of events and cause other systems and other hormone systems to definitely be affected as well. Um, so that's why it's so complex and, and why I chose to go into this type of medicine with regards to like women's health is, um, because I think at the time, I mean, rewind a little bit, there wasn't a lot of information out there for right. women. Um, or now there's a lot of information out there on sure. hormones and health and diets and supplementation. So it's really, for me, it's really kind of honing in and, and everybody's such an individual. So no woman is going to have the the same case or the same underlying root cause that might be affecting their 
hormone imbalance or affecting like how they're feeling. Right. And so it's kind of neat because I get to play detective a lot of the time um, to really, you know, investigate and figure out, okay, like where are the hormones going off and like what is affecting the hormones? Right. Is it a combination of a bunch of different things, which usually it is. So. Right. Yeah. And so a lot of root issues when it comes to health lie in the hormones, right? I'm sure you'd agree with that. A lot of different things that people don't even know about is coming from their hormone health. Right. So, yeah. And it's, are... I find sometimes it's like, it's the simplest things that, that we don't really realize that might be affecting, you know, and, and I think there's a lot of things that we kind of um, take for granted or we underestimate like the power of sleep or the power of food um, or the power of like meditation or mindfulness or really like supporting the nervous system. So those are some things that I really try to hit home with a lot of my patients that I say, okay, like, let's not forget about like, again, like laying the foundation, right? By the way, our customers and patients here love naturopathic doctors. So you want to quickly highlight, are you an MD, hey. DO or an ND? <laughs> I'm an MD. Nice. That's a good choice. <laughs> right. And so you're practicing in Canada. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I have a clinical practice um, in Victoria, British Columbia, up on the West Coast, and I'm very fortunate to be working with a whole host of, um, I work in, a, in an integrative clinic, so I work, <clears throat> excuse me, with um, physios, RMTs, acupuncturists, we have like mindfulness meditation programs wow. here, I also work with like, we have a whole mental health team of counselors and psychologists, because that's um, really needed. There's, there's a huge demand for that as well. Right. So I feel like I, I get to work with some pretty amazing, um, people in my practice. That's incredible. And what's the name of the facility? Um, it's called tall tree integrative health center. And, um, yeah, we actually okay. have, there's two clinics in Victoria and then we have another clinic in Vancouver as well. So amazing. So I'll put that in the show notes below. You guys can check that out for our Canadian listeners. Uh, you can do that, but I'm sure you do virtual as well. Is that right? Yeah, I do virtual visits, um, especially since COVID. You know, I do have a lot of patients that um, it's, you know, it's just more convenient for them to do right. virtual appointments. But um, I can only practice. One thing I always like to tell people is I can only practice within my province. Okay. Like I can't treat virtually to um, people outside of right. Canada or outside of my province. Like anymore. someone in California or... Arizona even. Okay. I mean, That's unless I got licensed in California, okay, exactly. unless I got licensed in yep. <clears throat> every state and every province. But. Yeah. Okay, great. So perfect start here with Dr. Marita show representing natural factors here today, naturopathic doctor in Canada. And we're talking hormones. She just gave us that rundown. Why are they so important? Why has she been focusing on them uh, clinically for 20 plus years now? So what what changes over the course of a, a female's life you know how do the hormones especially change how does that affect their health mental health immune system if you even want to go there since we're in the winter right now again mm -hmm. we see a lot of postmenopausal perimenopausal patients here at the clinic so give us a little highlight on that so i mean i think we can break it down to like hormone shifts so especially with women um especially when we start our menstrual cycle there are definitely hormonal changes that happen with that um, so monthly hormonal changes, um, then we look at, you know, things that can affect our hormones, um, uh, with regards to external factors. So like food can affect our hormones. If you have poor digestion, that can affect your hormones. Um, I talk a lot about stress with my, um, with my patients, cause that's a huge factor with cortisol, you know, one of your main stress hormones right. that can affect, you know, things like estrogen and progesterone and insulin and your thyroid and melatonin and sleep and all that. Um, but then if you look at sort of the timeline as, as we age, um, obviously when women hit um, perimenopause and menopause, postmenopause, there are some major hormonal shifts that happen during all of those times. And so I really try to educate my patients early on so that they can be more preventative. So they can right. say, okay, you know, say somebody in their thirties or twenties or thirties and they'll say, and, and so I'm, I'm kind of trying to give them like a good foundation leading up to perimenopause and menopause and not just like hitting menopause and, and then, you know, hormones are going crazy. And then we're trying to like put out fires wherever we right. can. Um, and then of course with pregnancy, right, there's a whole other layer of hormonal changes that happen with, um, 
fertility, pregnancy, and then post-pregnancy, right? Wow. Yeah. Rebalancing. So again, there's a, there's so many factors and there's so many things that are interplaying when it comes to like aging, when it comes to external factors that affect our hormones at different times of our life. Right. And so correct me if I'm wrong, but to summarize that, you want to set them up so it's not such a dramatic drop off in the estradiols and the progesterones and that testosterone. It's like falling off a cliff. You want to kind of set them up so it's a more smooth transition. For sure. Yeah. We always talk about like, okay, so how are your reserves doing and, and how do we keep you more resilient and give you those tools to make sure that your body's adapting okay. as well as it can. Um, we never know like what life is going to throw at us as well. Right. As far as trauma, as far as stressors. Um, so I always say it's so important to like, keep your reserves up. Um, keep that foundation there so that it, if something gets thrown at you and shifts your hormones, then again, your body's going to be that much more resilient because your body has the tools and, and is not, you know, going from a, a period of like, you know, the tax, the, the tanks is essentially empty, right? So you're drawing from nothing versus like drawing awesome. from like a good foundation. Building them up, right? So they have something to pull from. Mm -hmm. So you're not just kind of left hanging after all that, that transition happens. You're just depleted, correct? Yeah, exactly. Um, and so again, you know, when we talk about, I've, I've, you know, said this before, but we talk about, you know, again, like proper nutrition and getting that proper sleep. And, you know, I think, you know, we underestimate sort of the, the importance of, um, of movement and exercise and, um, and then meditation, whatever form that comes in, right? Like I always tell my patients like meditation, for some people, it's maybe being in a quiet room, but meditation for somebody else could be like a movement meditation, right? Like yeah. going to yoga class or going on a hike or, you know, whatever, maybe walking the dog. Right. And folks, by the way, I want to give a quick highlight right here. We are talking with Dr. Marita show of, of the natural factors. And right here, you can go to drmarita.com, D-O-C-T-O-R-M-A-R-I-T-A.com and just hit the about and you can explore Dr. Marita's world as well. Shoot her an email and uh, let her let her know that you listen to her on the podcast here at Healthy Habit Podcast. Uh, so drmarita.com, quick highlight on that. So tell us real quick about PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. A lot of people are getting this and it's, you know, more like you mentioned earlier, more and more information is coming out on this and it's being better diagnosed, especially by preventative doctors like ourselves. Tell us about PCOS. Mm -hmm. So polycystic ovarian syndrome is definitely a con condition that I'm seeing a lot more in my practice. Um, and I think, I don't know how it is where you are, but um, our health system up here is quite broken. Like a lot of my patients um, don't have like general practitioners, like they don't have medical doctors because there just is this lack of medical doctors. So right. a lot of times they're either having to go to urgent care Wow. Um, for more of like a preventative or chronic condition, but a lot of our urgent care clinics are maxed out as well. Right. And so thankfully myself and a lot of my colleagues are um, filling in the holes, right? Like we're trying because we're more preventative and proactive. Um, so a lot of these patients are coming in already have done like a lot of research themselves, like okay. looked online and they're like, I think I have this PCOS and yeah have a lot of the symptoms. So thankfully there's are a they lot right? of Are they right usually when they tell you that? You know what? Often they are. Oh, um, nice. I always like to do, I mean, obviously I do like a big workup and we do a history right. and we have at least like an hour to discuss all their health concerns, but I also um, like to run um, labs as well. And so with PCOS, just to back up a little bit, um, typically these are patients that are coming in that um, a lot of them have been having fertility issues. So they've been trying to get pregnant, um, and they've been having difficulty conceiving. Um, some of them will have had like very irregular cycles. So they'll have like maybe no cycle at all, like no period, or they'll have sort of these sporadic periods, mm. like one period every three to six months. Um, other symptoms they'll notice is that their, um, blood, they'll have blood sugar irregulation. So we call that like, um, insulin resistance. Right. So they'll have um, really, really high insulins. So the insulin's not working effectively or their blood sugar will be off. Um, they often have uh, issues with their metabolism because of the insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. So weight gain. 
And then there'll also be um, this imbalance of like excess androgens. So like male hormones, right. they'll find that they have, um, you know, abnormal uh, hair growth, like testosterone on their face. Yeah. With higher levels of testosterone um, or they'll notice um, their hair is thinning as well in certain like female pattern baldness um, areas. So these are kind of like the criteria and some of the symptoms that, that we notice with these patients. But I mean, the good news is, is that there's a lot that can be done through, again, like lifestyle, foundation, exercise, supplementation for these I'm patients. I'm glad you mentioned the hormone aspect there at the end, because I've been thinking a lot, a lot about this. Like a lot of the males, I, I see mostly men, Dr. Aaron seeing mostly the female patients, but we both see both, uh, is men are hanging out on the lower end of that testosterone range, like below 300, 400 consistently, while some women can get the higher testosterone. So why is that happening? What are some causes of higher female levels of testosterone if they're not really exercising and moving? You know, I've thought about that. Yeah. So a lot of it can be related to, um, well, I think a lot of it has to do with our, um, our environment yeah. and all of the, um, exogenous like hormone disruptors sure. that we're being exposed to. I mean, I just got back from, oh, I just got back from this amazing conference actually in, um, of all places in Hawaii, uh, which was like the best place to have a conference. <laughs> Not bad. But it was um it was actually put on by the Hawaii Association of Naturopathic Doctors. And um it was an excellent conference and a lot of it was on hormone balancing, like PCOS, fertility, and just like emphasizing like all the um microplastics that we're being exposed to, right? That that you, and even if you're, you know, it's kind of sad to think about, but even if you're like not microwaving in plastic and not using Saran and, you know, all your products are really clean, right? Like all your beauty products are really clean, yes. your cleaning products, we're still getting that exposure through the air, through water, right. through, right? So that's yeah. why it's even more important to really like set the body up for like proper detoxification and minimize your exposure as, as much as you can. But I think that there's this imbalance that's happening due to, yes, these endocrine hormonal that's disruptors. Definitely. That that's got to be a major reason why, especially for the personal care products, different makeups that women are using that men aren't really using on their face every day, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And shampoos and like shampooing a lot more and coloring agents on the on the scalp and all that. Yeah, and I think it also I've just noticed with a lot of younger women, it's um even like nails, right? Like okay. a lot of my younger um female patients, they get their nails done regularly or you know, they get certain treatments done to their bodies regularly right. or they For like sure. dye their hair or straighten their hair. Or, I don't know. There's like all these other treatments like I did, did when I was like in my teens. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so I just feel like there's just that much more exposure um to these chemicals. And so Makes I think but I think that that accounts for like men um, and women. And then I think when we look at like the liver, um, I think there's been a lot more talk also about, uh, you know, alcohol, for example, right? Like how much stress that puts on the liver, because your liver is kind of like your, it is one of your main detoxification organs. It's also how you balance your hormones. And so, you know, I've had a lot of chats with my patients about how much alcohol do you consume in a week? And it's surprising. A lot of, a lot of people have, you know, one or two drinks, to unwind in the evening. every night every night every 100%. night and that's so a good call that's a good about... bringing that up yep yeah, so personal care think... products and then that alcohol intake yeah and then you, you think about like how that's affecting the quality of sleep because that's when your body detoxifies when you're sleeping right that's one of the main like times where your body is really detoxing you know the body the brain everything like recharges your immune systems re recharging as well when you're sleeping and then so that's where, I mean, that can play, play a huge, huge role as well with, um, with regards to hormone balance. Right. Thanks for bringing that up, especially when there's information coming out, like red wine is so healthy and it's got tons of the flavonoids in it. And, um, the resveratrol, you know, but you'd have to drink like 40 bottles to get what a supplement might give you. Right. And that wouldn't be and, very and healthy. No, <laughs> then we'd be in the ER and then they'd have to go see Dr. Marita after for liver <laughs> detox. 
Um, so well, and that's, I think yeah. that's like good to emphasize. And it's not that I'm saying like, don't drink at all, but I think, right. you know, just be more mindful about that consumption. And I think the latest research now is saying like, try to keep it at two drinks a week, which I think is a little bit right. more reasonable than like two to three drinks per night. I and then the size cool. of the glass, like the amount, all this stuff goes into it. Yeah. I've, I've dived into this a little bit, like the, the percentage, the alcohol percentage of wines have been going up over time, over the last hundred years. So the wine a hundred years ago, isn't as strong as the wine now, which is really interesting. Yeah. Which again, puts more stress on the, the liver, right? Like your detoxification. Absolutely. So that's PCOS. Thanks for highlighting all that and, and what could be causing that specific a aspect of PCOS. And obviously not all women are going to have all those symptoms of PCOS, correct? You might have PCOS, but have completely normal testosterone, right? For sure. And that's where there's a little bit of confusion because um, it's not always textbook. So for PCOS, it's not always um, like you have to check each thing off the box, right? Like when you right. look at the symptoms, oh, and I guess one thing in the name that I didn't mention, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So you can get for females, get cysts in your ovaries, but that's not always the case either. Right. So right. you can have varying degrees of um, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Got it. And so what book do you dive into that more on the, uh, the adrenal stress connection or making sense of woman's health? If people want to go deeper on PCOS, I mean, there's a whole chapter on PCOS in my making sense of women's health, okay. um, but then there's, there's aspects of like the adrenal stress connection that, cause obviously cortisol can affect, you know, your testosterone and estrogen and progesterone and insulin. Um, but each book also highlights the lifestyle side of things too, because, I mean, we talked about micro microplastics, but then there's this whole, because there's a, such a strong tie to insulin, right. there's this whole sugar component, right? Where we're looking, you know, which I really coach my patients on, you know, like how much sugar are you getting in a day, right? Of added sugar, I should right. say, or starches, right? Like what kind of carbohydrates are you consuming? Are you consuming a lot of refined carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates? And, and then, you know, how much exercise are you getting to to burn that. And then of the carbohydrates, how much of the carbohydrates are you getting that have fiber in there too? So right. there's a lot of education that needs to be, um, yeah, that, that, that I need to do with my patients to kind of say, like, it's not just about, you know, like just cut out sugar, right? It's like, well, yeah. what sugars and, you know, right. how to where to find it. Yeah. Where are they? How to, what to replace it with? Mm -hmm. Um, so, okay, great. So thanks for highlighting that. And how can they get a copy of one of your books if people want to get one? Um, that's a really great question. <laughs> I, think they're, I think they're still available on, um, um, Amazon. Okay. And then I think a lot of stores still have them like with, you know, if you, um, like as far as like health food stores across the country. So right. if you went and purchased, um, like supplements, a lot of the stores will have my books as well. That's like the true being humble. You don't even know where they can go get them. So. <laughs> Okay, well, that's good. Well, to be honest with you, I think, I mean, I am due to do a, like an updated version of okay. like a women's health book. So Perfect. It's, in, it's on my maybe, radar. Maybe get them on that website. That would be good. <laughs> okay, great. So that was all things PCOS and Dr. Marita's books. Thanks for highlighting that. Any other suggestions for women in their childbearing years? Uh, by the way, we're coming in the last close here. We'll finish on this. In part two, we're going to dive into solutions for all this from a supplement perspective through natural factors. And we'll go a little bit more into natural factors as well as a company. Any other suggestions for women in their childbearing years who are dealing with hormonal concerns? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the things we've kind of touched on, um, I do have quite a few fertility patients that I'm working with right now. And again, um, like we're really focusing on, I guess one thing that we haven't talked about yet is um, like adequate amounts of protein. So protein is really important. It's like kind of one of those building blocks. Also important for blood sugar and insulin balance. Um, um, so it's a really, really important uh, nutrient. Um, but along with that is, you know, I'm, I'm really focusing on telling my patients to, you know, try to encourage them to eat things like whole foods, avoid package foods. Um, we talked about sleep. Um, yeah. Stress right. management, right. There's, I mean, I think it's really difficult nowadays with a lot of patients, like, especially women trying to multitask sure. and 
try to take on everything all at once. Right. Um, but yeah, as far as like supplementation, I know we're going to talk about it in the next segment, but yeah, there's the like intro. really preventative supplements that can be taken as well. Perfect. And then last, how did you get involved with natural factors? We'll finish on that note here for part one. Oh, so it's interesting. So I, um, I was in practice. It was early on in practice and there were a few, um, natural factors, women's supplements that I had been using quite regularly with my patients with great, um, great results. Right. And then word kind of got out that I was using like their products without, you know, being connected to them okay. yet. And yeah, they reached out and they asked if I wanted to do some work That's with them. Amazing. And it was like a great, yeah, it just kind of made sense. It was like a perfect partnership. Right. So you were already using them clinically and yourself, mm. family, friends, and then you had that opportunity come up. So that's mm. amazing. Well, yeah. we love natural factors here. That's for sure. And give a shout out to Jeanette Gonzalez and Chanthi and the whole team there. You guys have been yeah. incredible. Uh, we carry their full line here. If there's anything we're missing, you, we can also always special order it for you. Or we'll just let Jeanette know. and We'll get you guys whatever product supplement you're looking for here at Healthy Habit Health Foods, 6029 North 7th Street. And uh, that wraps up part one here with Dr. Marita's show. So stay tuned, folks. Part two is coming up next. Thank you, Dr. Marita, for coming on. Thank you.